making French and flat fell seams. A French seam is a seam within a seam, enclosing all raw edges. It is appropriate to use on sheer or lightweight fabrics. To make a French seam, place wrong sides of the fabric together. A French seam consists of two seams, and the first stitching will be on the right side of the garment. To make the first seam, stitch 1 4 inch from the seam line. So for a 5 8 inch seam, this would be about 3 8 inch from the raw edge. The second stitching will take up the remaining 1 4 inch of the seam allowance. To help in turning the seam, first press the seam open. Then press the seam allowance to one side. Now trim the seam allowance to about 1 8 inch. It should be narrow enough so that the second stitching will completely enclose the seam allowance. Fold the garment so that right sides of the fabric are together. Press the seam edge so that the first row of stitching is directly on the folded edge. Then pin the two layers together. Stitch the second seam along the original seam line, about 1 4 inch from the folded edge. For very delicate fabrics, the finished width could be even narrower. Notice that the second stitching encloses all raw edges. From the right side, the seam looks like a plain seam. The finished width of the seam is about 1 4 inch. The seam can usually be pressed in either direction. The French seam works best on straight seams and would be difficult to use on curved seams. A flat fell seam has two rows of machine stitching showing on one side of the fabric, which is usually the right side, and one row of stitching on the other side. The seam encloses all raw edges, so raveling is not a problem. To make the flat fell seam, first place wrong sides of the fabric together and pin. This seam will have the two rows of machine stitching on the right side of the fabric. Place right sides of the fabric together if you want the two rows of stitching to appear on the inside of the garment. Stitch the first seam on the regular seam line. This stitching shows on the outside of the completed garment, so it must be perfectly straight and machine tension should be well balanced. First press the seam open, and then press the seam allowance to one side. Side seams are usually pressed to the back, and shoulder seams toward the front. The bottom seam allowance is trimmed to 1 8 inch. Trim the upper seam allowance to 1 half inch. In most cases, you will be cutting off just 1 8 inch. To form the flat fell seam, turn under the upper edge 1 4 inch, which would be half the width of the seam allowance. Then carefully press the folded edge, keeping the width uniform since the seam allowance and the machine stitching are on the right side of the fabric. Pin the edge of the seam, or you may find it easier to baste the seam close to the folded edge. 
To complete this seam, stitch about 1 16th inch from the folded edge. The stitching may be done in matching or contrasting thread, depending on the effect desired. You may use a regular stitch length or a longer stitch length for a more decorative effect. Only one row of stitching will show on the wrong side of the garment. On the right side, two rows of stitching about one fourth inch apart are visible. The flat fell seam is a very durable seam appropriate for sportswear and many children's play clothes. making square or V-shaped corners. Corners such as those found in V or square yokes and gussets must be carefully made to avoid bulk and weakening of seams. To prevent stretching and to strengthen the seam line, stitch for about one inch on each side of the point of the V on the garment piece that has the inside corner. The point of the V can be transferred to the fabric with a tracing wheel or with tailor's tacks. Use a shortened stitch length of about 15 stitches per inch and stitch close to the seam line. Clip into the inside corner through the seam allowance to within a thread of the stay stitching. This must be done before pinning the two layers together. Notice that the stitching line at the point of the V on the yoke piece was also transferred to the fabric from the pattern. Pin the right sides of the two pieces together with a stitched corner facing you. Make sure that the markings for the location of the corner match. If you place pins parallel to and directly on the stitching line, you can examine the seam from the right side before actually stitching. Notice how the slashed corner must spread open in order for the two pieces to fit together correctly. Stitch the seam. Notice that the two layers match along the outside edge at the stitching line and not at the cut edge. Stitch slowly up to the point of the V. Stop the machine with a needle in the fabric. Raise the presser foot, adjust the fabric, and continue stitching the rest of the seam. First press the yoke seam open, and then press the seam allowances toward the yoke. On most yoke designs, the seams are pressed towards the yoke. Layer the seam allowances. Remember that the layer closest to the outside of the finished garment is the widest. The second layer can be left as is or trimmed a little narrower. Cut away the excess fabric from the point of the V on the yoke piece. If the fabric ravels, these seam edges will need to be finished. Layering and notching of the seam allowances are important techniques used to reduce bulk. If the fabric ravels badly, the inside corner may need to be reinforced with a small piece of fusible interfacing before stay stitching. Use recommended pressing procedures to fuse the interfacing to the wrong side of the piece with the inside corner. Then stay stitch the inside corner to reinforce the V and to prevent stretching. Slash to the stitching line at the corner to within a thread of the stay stitching. Proceed with pinning as before, first matching the reinforced V with the marked point on the yoke. Place pins parallel to and directly on the seam line. Be sure the seam edges are even when pinning the seam.
stitch on the seam line, stitching slowly to the point of the V. Start with the needle in the fabric, pivot the material and continue stitching the rest of the seam. This illustrates the layered seam from the wrong side. Notice that the seam allowances are usually pressed toward the yoke. From the right side, the yoke seam should form a sharp corner at the point of the V. There should be no excess fabric along the seam line or any puckering at the point of the yoke. This seam could also be top stitched for a more decorative effect. Sewing unlike curved seams. Seams with unlike curves, such as those found in the curved princess or curved yoke lines, need special preparation when being stitched. The first step is to stay stitch about one half inch from the raw edge on the garment piece that has the inside curve. Then clip to the stay stitching about every one half inch in the curved areas. This clipping is important to allow the curved seam to spread apart when pinning the seams together. With a stay stitched layer on top, pin the two garment pieces together, first matching the notches. Continue pinning the seam allowance together, checking that the cut edges are always even. Notice how the seam allowance of the inside curve must spread when the two layers are being pinned together. At the end of the seam, the two garment pieces should be even at the stitching line, not at the cut edge. Stitch the seam using the stay stitching as a sewing guide. Notice that the second row of stitching is just a little deeper than the stay stitching, so the stay stitching should not show when the stitching is completed. This seam can be pressed open, or both seam allowances can be pressed to one side. When the seam is pressed open, small tucks will form on the seam allowance of the garment piece that has the outside curve. Press lightly to determine the location of these tucks. Cut notches into the seam allowance to remove this excess fullness. Place the notches fairly close together and keep them small enough so that the cut edges just meet when the seam allowance is pressed open. The curve will be smoother if notches are kept small and are closer together than when using a few larger notches. Notice that a pressing cushion can be used when pressing a curved princess seam. A second method of pressing a curved princess seam is to press the seam allowance towards the center. First press the seam open, then press both layers towards the center. If this technique is used, the seam allowances should be layered. Remember the layer closest to the outside of the garment is left the widest. If the fabric ravels, this edge will need to be finished. A curved princess seam should be flat and smooth. There should be no puckering along the seam line. The seam may be top stitched for a more decorative effect. Sewing crotch seams. Crotch seams should be sewn as a continuous seam through the front and back. This eliminates the need for clipping, which weakens the seam. This method requires less manipulation and allows for easier fitting adjustments to be made at the side seams. Stitch the inseams of the pants front and back together. Press seams open. Pin the crotch seam matching the right sides of back and front garment sections. Match the inseams and notches. Pin the entire seam together. Stitch the crotch seam in one continuous seam.
reinforce the lower crotch curve between the notches with a second row of straight or zigzag stitching. If the fabric ravels, the zigzag stitching can also be used as a seam finish. Trim the seam allowance in the curved area to about 3 8 inch or trim close to the zigzag stitching. This is one curved seam which should not be clipped. The seam allowance above the curve will be pressed open and these seam edges also should be finished. To complete the side seams, refold the garment so that right sides are together with right front against right back and left front against left back. When a fitting is desirable, pin seams with pins parallel to and directly on the seam line. This would allow you to check the fit of before stitching. Stitch the side seams, then press seams open. The waistline treatment can be completed to finish the pants. When this technique is used, it would be difficult to fit the pants before the stitching is completed. The inseam and side seam of each pant leg have been stitched and seams have been pressed open. Turn one leg section right side out and slide inside the other leg section. Notice that right sides of the garment pieces are together. Pin the crotch seam together, first matching the inseam and the notches. You will be pinning the back sections together and the front sections together. Stitch the crotch seam in one continuous seam. Again, the lower curve should be reinforced with a second row of stitching. When a knit fabric is used, this second stitching may be done with a straight machine stitch placed close to the first row of stitching. Trim the seam allowance in the curved area to 3 8 inch. Press the seams open above the crotch curve and complete the pants by finishing the waistline as desired. This method is often followed when there is a center front or center back opening. Stitch the lower part of the crotch seam on the section where the zipper placket is located. Start the stitching one and one half inches from the inseam and stop at the end of the placket opening. This is usually a 5 8 inch seam. Secure each end by back stitching. Reinforce this area with a second row of stitching, which is usually placed next to the first row. This area would be difficult to stitch once the zipper has been inserted. Complete the placket opening as desired. Then stitch the pants front to the pants back at the inseams. Press seams open. Complete the crotch seam by pinning the remaining portion of the seam together, first matching the inseams and then the notches. Complete the stitching of the crotch seam by starting the stitching on the lower curve, just below the completed placket. Reinforce the lower curve with a second row of straight or zigzag stitching. The side seams can be stitched and pressed open. Finish the waistline as desired to complete the pants. Preparing a hem. To ensure a well-made hem, careful preparation is necessary. For the best results, have someone measure the garment for the hem. Put the garment on, adding a belt if that is part of the design.
wear shoes with heels the appropriate height. Determine the distance from the hemline to the floor and have someone else mark the hem using a yardstick or a hem marker for measuring. If possible, have that person work around you. Place pins about every three or four inches around the garment. Then measure a second time to check accuracy of the pinning. It is helpful at this point to turn the hem to the inside and pin in place so that you can check the length before taking off the garment. Take into consideration body proportion, garment style, and current fashion when determining the appropriate length. The finished hem should be parallel to the floor and should be an attractive length for you. Remove the garment and fold the hem along the marked line, placing a row of pins just above the fold line. It is important to work on a broad surface in order to check the curvature of the hem. Match hem seam lines to the garment seam lines and adjust fullness evenly. Remove the pins that mark the fold line. Press lightly along the fold line, being careful not to press over any pins. Continue this procedure around the entire garment. Measure up from the fold line a uniform amount and mark with either pins or chalk. The finished width of the hem depends on the style of the garment and the weight of the fabric. Then cut along this marked line so that the garment hem allowance will be the same width around the entire garment. It is important to reduce bulk at seam allowances, so layer the seam inside the hem by cutting the seam allowance diagonally from the hem edge to the fold line. Notice that the seam allowance is not trimmed beyond the hem fold line. When the edge of the hem is wider than the skirt, the excess fullness should be eased. To do this, place a row of machine stitching about 1 8 inch from the cut edge of the hem. Drop the thread on the wrong side of the hem by pulling the lower thread at regular intervals along the hem edge, drawing up the excess fabric. Distribute the fullness evenly so that the hem fits the garment without distorting the hemline. If too much was pulled up, it can be released as you readjust the hem. Remove all pins. You will find that some of the fullness can be shrunk out by pressing with steam or by using a damp press cloth. To avoid pressing a ridge to the outside of the garment, place heavy paper between the hem and the outer layer. Complete the hem with an appropriate edge finish and hemming stitch. Finishing a hem. No one edge finish is suitable for all hems. The fabric used and the garment style are the main considerations in determining which finish is appropriate. Tape or lace can be applied to the raw edge of fabric that ravels. It is often used on an eased hem to hold the easing in place. Place the edge of the tape one fourth inch from the raw edge of the hem. If an ease stitch has been used, fit the tape to the hem edge after the extra fullness of the hem has been eased in. It is important not to pull the tape tighter than the circumference of the skirt. Machine stitch the tape to the hem. 
stitching about 1 16th inch from the edge of the tape. Be sure that the cut end of the tape is folded under where the tape is joined and then pin the hem in place. To make the slip stitch or blind stitch, fasten the thread securely under the edge of the tape. Take a small stitch in the garment fabric directly below the stitch in the tape. Slide the needle under the edge of the tape and bring the needle to the outside about one half to three fourths inch away from the first stitch. Hemming is usually done with a single thread. Keep the thread slightly loose between each stitch to avoid having the hand stitching create a ridge on the right side of the garment. If the raw edge does not ravel excessively, the edge can be finished with either straight or zigzag machine stitching. Be sure that the seams have been trimmed before stitching the edge. When zigzagging, position the stitching as close to the hem edge as possible. If it is necessary to ease the hem, add a row of straight stitching close to the hem edge. Zigzagging can be used as a finish on most medium to heavyweight fabrics. The straight stitch would be used on fabrics that ravel only slightly, such as wool or wool blends. The zigzag stitch should be on the very edge of the hem to prevent the fabric from raveling. The lock stitch is often used as a hemming stitch and is appropriately placed one fourth inch back from the hem edge. When pinning the hem, place pins parallel to the hem edge. Roll back the hem edge about one fourth inch. Fasten the hemming thread under the hem edge. Hold the rolled edge of the hem and the thread with the thumb. Take a small stitch in the garment and the rolled back edge at the same time. Pull up the excess thread but leave the stitches slightly loose. A tight stitch will cause a ridge to show on the right side. Space stitches about one half to three fourths inch apart. When taking the stitch in the garment, Pick up only one thread so that the stitches will not show on the right side. A single thread is usually used when hemming a garment. To prevent a ridge from being pressed to the right side of the garment, place a piece of heavy paper under the edge of the hem. Press carefully using an up and down pressing motion. The lock stitch is a durable hemming stitch, and if done correctly, should be invisible from the right side of the garment. 